How's it going everyone? My name is Sanyan and you're watching my first ever redstone tutorial video. In this video I will be showing you how you can make this item frame combination lock. If you don't already know, an item frame combination lock allows you to turn the items in the item frames and once you get them in a particular order you will get a redstone signal like this. So let's take a look around the back and we can see that it is extremely extremely compact, very small. Uh, and I'm even willing to bet that this is the smallest design that is possible as of this version of Minecraft. I was able to find one other version online of a similar lock. Uh, this one is by Mambo Jumbo, but I gotta say, I really don't like it. It uses pistons, which are not only hard to get in survival because you need slime balls, but they also make a sound when you're using the machine. This allows you to listen for the piston firing and actually helps you crack the code. So, let's get started with the tutorial. First off, for this lock you're going to need the following items. 10 redstone dust, 5 redstone torches, 1 redstone repeater, 8 comparators, 4 furnaces. And of course, you're going to also need 4 item frames and 4 items to put inside. I've already placed the item frames here, so we're going to go around the back and get started with the redstone. You're going to want to place two comparators like this, one on subtract with the dust in between. Mirror that to the other side like this, don't forget to put them in subtract. Then we're going to do the same thing for the other two item frames. Just one layer higher, two comparators like this, dust in between, put them on subtract. Two more comparators, dust in between, subtract. Then we're going to go back down, place two blocks to the side like this with two torches on top. A repeater in the middle pointing that way. A redstone line like this and a redstone dust on top. Then we too are going to jump up. We're going to place a block to the side of these torches as well as on top of them. Build out a small platform like this, put two torches over here and connect the redstone dust over here. Then uh, we're gonna need one more torch at the back here and our furnaces over here. You can place these against the comparator while holding shift so that you don't accidentally put this in subtract. Now in order to make sure that this machine uh, gets the code right, we're going to reset all of these to their original position and then count the amount of times that we have to click in order to get them to point the right way. So this one has to uh, be clicked one, two, three, four times. Let's remember that. Then we're going to look over here because these are the items that we're going to have to put into the furnaces in order to make the machine respond the correct way. For four, we're going to need 11 snowballs or 42 dirt or any other uh, stackable item to 64. So let's do that. I'm going to use snowballs because they stack to 16, which means that we're going to need fewer of them. Oh, one too many. There we go, 11. Next up, we're going to count this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. For six, we will need two snowballs and a stack, or five uh, items stackable to 64, as well as a stack. Now for a stack, you could use uh, a full stack, but I prefer to use unstackable items. Now for uh, furnaces, you're gonna need a wooden item, so we're gonna use the wooden shovel. We need two snowballs, Next up, this one is pointed towards the default position, which means we don't have to click it. That means zero items inside the furnace. This one has to be clicked one, two times. So let's take a look. Two means we're gonna put in four snowballs. Now you can check if the machine works correctly by seeing if everything is aligned and then going round the back. If this torch is on, that means you got the combination correct. 
With the machine finished, there may also be one thing left that you're wondering about. Whenever the door is open, you want the door to shut behind you, and you don't want everyone knowing that you're inside and also showing them what your code is. So I will be showing you one easy method of doing that. You're going to go around the back and connect some redstone to the output torch. You're going to lead that into a piston in the ground with a block on top. Out from there goes a repeater which is connected to another sticky piston pointing into a redstone block. Now, when the redstone block extends, it's going to be in this spot. So we're going to place some redstone here and connect that to our door. Now, whenever we get the code correct, we can see that the door opens and we can reset our code so nobody knows what it is and the door stays open. Now that we're inside, we obviously want to close the door behind us. So you put a button wherever you want and connect that button up to the block with the piston below it. Now when you're inside, you can press the button to close the door. Also, when you want to go out, you can press the button again and the door stays open. Now if you want to close it, you're going to have to fill in your code again, like this and the door closes. Now you can reset everything and the door remains closed. I hope that's all you needed to know and that's the end of the video. I don't have an outro, so later.